Today on After Drive, it's overlanding at Classic Car Club Manhattan and one of the coolest classic Range Rovers you've ever seen today on After Drive. Hey, welcome to After Drive from the Classic Car Club Manhattan uh, on Pier 76, the beautiful Hudson River. Uh, Zach Mosley, Michael Pricinello, and today's guest, Rob Madera from Legacy Overland. And uh, we're going to be talking to Rob. I mean, Honestly, I, I have been looking at this classic Range Rover that he brought in. We're going to hear more about it. And uh, I, I'm just like in love with this. You're thing. gobsmacked. I'm gobsmacked. Yeah. Well, and to give cool some context, truck. we're here in another uh, Gears in the Piers at the Classic Car Club. We yes. started our own car show series, picking different makes. So we've got the Overland Edition. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we talked to our friend Rob here to, to kind of uh, anchor it with some of his awesome vehicles. We got the guys from Alloy and Grip brought some of their uh, readers trucks yep. and one of their cover trucks is here. So we've loaded up the pier with a bunch of cool trucks. So far it hasn't fallen in the river, but we're doing all right. So Yeah, I mean, this is a cool thing. We're going to be doing this a lot more often. Yeah, um, the tires are so big. There's so much air in them. They probably all Yeah, they probably spread out pretty well. Yeah, so, right. you know. Yeah. River let, race. Let's, let's test it out. Do you want to lay down underneath one of the trucks to see if it drives you over? It's all right. I, I am, <laughs> I'm probably the only one on this panel who's already been run over by a car. <laughs> <laughs> You've yes. had all kinds of things happen to you. Yeah. But although, you're, if you were lying down, your cap would catch first. So. That's right. That's right. Or um, my helmet on typical things. But I think we should turn this into an over river race rather than land. Perhaps. Right but we, all, we have tunnels for that. Um, hey Rob, okay. uh, thanks for showing up <laughs> and um, bringing the toys that you brought. Um, you know, tell me about what uh, Legacy Overland is. So we got started sort of on a premise of not to sort of go back to cliches, right? But it's it's sort of this aspirational overlanding experience that sort of, of course, is rooted in a truck. At, but at the end of the day, like you know, it's more than a truck. It's like getting out there, doing things, seeing things. Sort of simplicity of the truck, but still. Like taking the time to build the trucks, yeah. taking a little bit longer, like sort of old school craftsmanship, making them a little different maybe than sort of what they sort of came out of the, the plants as, but you know, still preserving that original identity, right? And sometimes we go a little off the reservation, do something a little bit sort of wilder. We have one here that's like sort of a defender that's like a little bit more urban. We gotta sort of stretch our wings and not just fit in sort of the same sure. mold. Right? So can, can, can you tell us a little bit about what your definition of overland is? Because I, I grew up in two places that were uh, different versions of kind of off-road land. I, I grew up in Maine, where you know the Maine in the 80s and 90s, where the local mullet-wearing Mike Spinelli would show up with like you know a C10 pickup jacked up with swampers on it and go like rocking around through the you know the pipeline or the electrical field where they could oh, where they clear cut big paths for electrical good, yeah. lines and just rock around. And then I lived riding the power lines. Right, and, and and then I lived in Colorado and went out to Utah a bit, and I'd see, you know, kind of more traditional jeeps and stuff, just kind of doing rocky trails or like uh, kind of crazy crawler rigs with big fluorescent green tube chassis with huge tires, long travel suspension. But it seemed this overland thing has just been coming around in the past, I don't know, maybe ten years to to really be. A thing, but yeah. what is that thing? What is what? what where, where, where does Overland depart from? What are we doing from, here? From my mullet-wearing <laughs> friends in the '80s, you know, with their swamping, swamping pickup trucks. Like, where? Right. How does this fall in? I mean, I, I don't <laughs> think we're we're not in the mullet camp, and we're we're <laughs> sort of not in the pipeline camp, right? Yeah. So we sort of go in that that Miller Road. But that said, I mean, you can use them for whatever you want, of course. But in my mind, it is sort of a just getting out there, something simple, getting out some trails. It's not sort of about technical off-roading. It's not about the gear and the truck and, and sort of horsepower. It's about actually just getting out there and enjoying it. it, right? Just, yeah. just get out there and sort of drive it. And it doesn't have to be technical. It doesn't have to be sort of long. Because like a lot of our clients, frankly, right, at the end of the day are sort of busy people, right? And what you want to sort of do for them is enable just get out of Manhattan, get out of you know yeah. wherever you are, like drive around. It's a good extreme bit, right? experience for the weekend or whatever it is. But it's, I, I don't think of it as a vehicle. I think of it as the, the activity that that particular vehicle lets you do. Exactly, right? exactly. And in your case, it's building functional vehicles. I mean, that's the thing. It's like right. they're functional because you're going to go out there. They're not made to just take to the cars and coffee. I mean, like the, the trucks no. that you build, like they look great and you could bring them to the cars and coffee. But I mean, it's really, you know, 
get out off roading. Yep. Um, maybe it's camping. Maybe you're going on a long, like you know, out west, you can kind of go for days uh, off road, fire roads, and that kind of stuff. Yep. And running like drugs through the backlands. Running drugs through the backlands. <laughs> through the backlands. <laughs> And it's like having the experience. Stay off the grid. Exactly. Uh, we have the LS3 for that, so you know you can catch exactly. a speed. Mm -hmm. Having the experience, and and it's sort of that's that's something that's that's kind of happening in the custom car world, if you want to yeah. call it that. Now, uh, you know, Lee Keen's Safari 911s are very functional in that way. I think it's yeah. great to see people building cars that serve a purpose other than an aesthetic end. Hold on, what what happened, Zach? Did you just did you drop something? I dropped my mic. Again. All right, no, it's cool. we're just we're just no we're over here like we're just over here talking. You know, you guys. You know. It would it, it wouldn't be an after drive if my mic didn't fall. That's true. At some point, that's really true. At least it didn't come unplugged. Yeah. Zach does the lav drop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, so yeah, well, well, so tell me about this truck here specifically. What's what's going on with this classic Range Rover? I, I love them, right? It's like there's, it's like a little bit of a unicorn in the U.S. The two-door Range Rover Classics, yeah. and I just love the design of the trucks. It's sort of that boxy Minimalism. look. Yeah, exactly. And and also it is sort of the, the Mac Daddy of every SUV out there. These were the first ones that came out. Before then, it was farm equipment. Right. This was the first one that took it sort of one step ahead, but it still preserved the functionality, right? right. So. So it's not, you know, all Ritz and Glitz. Um, so this one actually is my truck. This is my, I built it for myself and sort of sat down, came up with design, sort of with a team as usual, and went back to keeping something simple that was true to its historical self. So it has the original stock V8, it has the five-speed gearbox, but it's a little bit of a Frankenstein because the frame is 1973, body is 1983, seats are 87, gearbox I think is an 85, the engine uh, 86 maybe. So right. this was something that someone in Europe at some point had put together and I said, well, it's my truck. I like all, how it came together. Let's fix it up, add a couple of things, but to preserve it and yeah. then, you know, yeah. enjoy it. I mean, that's kind of the nature of the beast of these things too. I mean, you know, sometimes you, you find one, the frame is, rotted out and sometimes you find one that's newer and galvanized and yep. when, you know you find the engine that's you know that's that's screwy um, you know the, yeah. the old rover most, v8 most of screwy. ours <laughs> are pretty screwy to start with yeah. but I mean that's what we do we sort of take them all apart uh, and sort of rebuild them from scratch and sort of do all you know everything uh, better than factory yeah. right. so are you yeah. building these for clients now or is that uh, or for uh, we, we, are, we and whatever you call them. Uh, we, we do both. So, so these four ones here that we have today, um, the Range Rover, the Defender, and, and sort of the other Defender are sort of our own build, house builds. The FJ40, the blue one, that's a client build. So we, we tend to work probably 80% on client builds. And then we sort of do our own sort of right. along so long So you get side. to like experiment with things that just you want to do. Exactly. That people haven't thought of yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We get to do what we want to do and, and sometimes, you know, stretch your wings a little bit. Right. You know, and are you sticking just within that wheelhouse, like Land Rovers and uh, FJs, or are you going into other makes and models too, or what? So, I mean, I, I, you know, I love, I love the uh, Overlanders. I love these ones. We've done some Mercedes Gs. We're also looking at Scouts to do a couple of those ones. But there's a little pet project I have, which is 1973 Alpha GTV 2000 that sort of painstakingly renovating. It was, it was rust and, and sort of willpower holding it together. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we have this Rust and willpower. I like, yeah, I like I mean, that concept. Yeah. <laughs> our, our metal uh, guys sort of in the body shop are just wizards. Amazing what sort of they do. It's basically built a Old new car. Old school, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, you can buy panels, but uh, we have a shop in Europe, in Portugal, and then we have a shop here in the U.S. And a lot of that metal work is done in Portugal where things are still done the old traditional way and this guy, you know, with his hammer. And like, I mean, you see this thing just taking shape. Yeah. So that's a little bit of a side project and, you know, 9-11 after that and yeah. you know, things yeah. keep on. Cool. 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 So cool. what you really, I assume you're restoring it basically to stock, right? Or what are you doing with that GTV? Or, that or, or are we going to see an Overland no, Safari like GTV? I mean, yeah, that's a good idea. You know? <laughs> yeah. I think of that. Well, who's that guy that Lifted does alpha. it? Uh, li Lifted Alpha. Alpha. But it's, it's fell off the truck. Yeah, so the one that fell so off the truck I, and it was damaged I don't, and you yeah, rebuilt it. Yeah, fell off and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fell off a lift. Fell, it? Yeah, no, no, a truck. Right? Fell off yeah. the truck. Yeah, yeah. Um, truck I came across it. it in California. It is very cool. It's cool. Safari cool. Alpha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I saw it. I saw it at. It has like Polaris Razor 
wheels on or tires or something, right? They're, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. I don't it's know what they are. I, so we'll, the photo is, yeah. is here somewhere. Um, but I'll, I'll show you guys but later. Some, somehow lift, lifted Alpha with not tires on it. I saw that Radwood out in California. Yeah. 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 It was in the parking lot because it wasn't from the 80s and 90s, but it was the coolest thing. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's get into the Bring a Trailer Challenge. Zach, what are the rules? All right, so the rules are pretty loose this time. We, 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 we wanted to uh, just to fill all your overlanding proclivities with uh, a vehicle from Bring a Trailer. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Has to be within the last three months. Although I think we always have some rule breakers that might have already. Well, guests. Happened. Are, so, yeah. so one so, thing: so, guests are allowed to break the rules. Yeah, right? guests are allowed to make their own rules. But usually, we want trucks that are actually sold, you know, on Bring a Trailer for one. Not like, oh, maybe it would have sold for this, but didn't hit its reserve. And right. generally, it's in the last three months. Um, and you know, I got to say, I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was going to be tough, like such a kind of narrow thing, like whatever. But. I kind of had a little blast in the past going through the yeah. uh, trucks and the trailer. Me too, and I, like, I normally need to have that car that, that, uh, that you guys make fun of, and yeah. I, I found it. You found <laughs> it. And it's, and it's, you know, it's, it's drab, enough of an overlander. Drab, greenish brown, something like that. You will find out soon. Green is down. It's good vintage. Yeah, nineteen <laughs> seventies, right? So yeah, he's good vintage. Yeah. Really. yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, Michael is first. I am first. As, as per the uh, tradition. This tradition. Okay. So what did you choose? No. So my first one. Oh. I went non-traditional. So in the spirit what? of overlanding I being mean, being a pursuit rather yeah. than a vehicle, I went for a uh, GS. 1200 BMW. Um, <laughs> Not a shout truck. Out, shout out to Phil Cavanaugh, um, part of the Classic Car Club, and he's a GS fanatic. It's cool all around though. Manhattan. But honestly, if you want to get somewhere yeah. that's hard to get to, over land, and do it simply, I, I honestly yeah. can't come up with a better version than that. Yeah, this th 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 this is good. It kind of gets right to what I was saying. Like, what is overlanding? Yeah. It's literally yeah. just driving over land. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It says yeah. basically what it is. It doesn't have to be. Cool, unique motoring, whatever, a mechanical thing, yes. You know, can you put your titanium max somewhere in there? Totally, you know? Whatever sure. whatever required. You don't know? even need it on that, <laughs> right? Like in yeah. a truck you'd have to you'd have yeah. to hatch your things away, but you know, I just go you. around it. There you go. Look at that. Look That's at this it. thing. I mean it's a cool looking bike. It's great, nice. man. They are they are they are listen, BMW's been building these things for years. If you want to ride two wheels off-road, that is your option. I mean, it, look, there look, are look. other ones, but they're not as good. And so this has the it's got uh, crash bars. The crash bars around the heads. It, which by the way, the heads are usually what protect your legs and in, in, uh, in also motor. It's cold out. You get a little bit of like the heat coming off of them, and it oh, it's like breaks leg the warmers. wind a bit. Yeah, a little bit. You right. also have you, have you have hand grip warmers on there, which yeah. is good. You have Not bad. Cars. You have it, adjustable it, suspension. You have BMW navigation on it, yeah. and it was okay. it was well cared for. All right, how much it, was this? Fourteen. Wow. Fourteen thousand. And it's you on. have the uh, the pannier. What are they? Ban pannier yeah. boxes. Yep. Yeah. That to me looks like you're ready to go save someone who's hurt themselves in their It does look a little bit German ambulance. Yeah, right. It is. When you see them on the Autobahn, <laughs> they're on their BMW motorcycles. Totally. Or there. the those out those Swiss Alps patrol guys. Did you ever see the German police motorcycles yeah. that have the little like gurney be little ambulance set up behind them? Yeah, it's really Some cool. Shit, yeah. we, if I was on the road spewing blood in places and that showed up, I'd be like, ah oh, right, shit. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> were, were these not the ones that they ran all over the original party, the car as well? Yes. So yeah. That, yeah. I mean, that's yep. if so there's a test, that's yeah, the that's test. The there you go. Yep. It even ran the car. So not the first vehicle, I will hint, that uh, ran the car of the ones that we are showing today. But anyway, oh, oh, just say. All right, so here's your second one. Option two was extreme in the other oh. way. A shout out to my other good friend, Zach Mosley. I found a Volvo. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, six by six. Yeah. Those like are it. not common. Like, normally it's the four by fours, right? right? So like, I thought that that was just super interesting. Okay. Um, and then if you were to do the overlanding pursuit, let's say, there's so much room in there to turn that into some kind of living quarters, right? Yeah. So I you mean, have a lot of like bare space. Clearly, yeah. I mean, I'm going to assume, I have not driven one, but I'm going to assume it's pretty uh, capable off-road. It was made for the Swedish Army. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who, who needs a pop-up tent when you've got like a When you've got a living room in the back, yeah. right? So it's kind of like Incredible. a rad school bus. Well, these are really cool. I, um, so what is that? Three liter uh, straight six. Straight six. It's not diesel, which two I thought speed, was surprising. Uh, yeah. Two-speed transfer case. I mean, diesel... Uh, I mean, you know more than me, w would need a uh, block heater probably in some places? Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, in, 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 uh, in Sweden, that might be a problem. Yeah. Think, you know? But um, maybe that's why. Yeah. But, when, uh, I, when I grew up as a kid, so I'm actually half Swedish. And uh, like, so like. Top or bottom? 
the better part. <laughs> all, I mean, they were all over like the countryside. We see them like running around. Like, and if you want something overland, like that's obviously sort of winter ready. I mean, clearly yeah. these are being put through the trials, right? Yeah. I'm not sure I would take it sort of where it's warm, but I'd go to Canada, Alaska, you know, head out sort of. Oh, like uh, that's a good point. Just like they're just the so business. no surfing in Mexico in this one, huh? Yeah, I don't know about that. Like you know, those engines and the cooling and yeah, you know, right, you know right. sitting there and baking those, right? I mean, not quick. Well, you're not going to so be my Scandinavian Nordic. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Or, or you know, in your homage to me, good good uh, off roader for Maine. Yeah, that's right. right. It's, it's so not going to get that hot. Maine, we'll so not we're good. skim across the landscape uh, like a gazelle. We'll say I love. Um, the lack of overhang, you know? Yeah, so, no, that's cool. Right. What you As could do though, is just, just put a rack on the back for your GS, and then you get it all covered. You can go slowly with your living room, and then hop in your GS and skim across the landscape. Can we set like it up where I can pull yeah. out while it's still moving? <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 like Knight Rider style? Yeah, yeah that, would make, that would make me really well, happy. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, uh, Michael, it, so, it, you, yeah. you keep the same voice. Although, uh, he, same name? Guy passed away, but anyway. Did he? I think so. What's his name? Not Can't the hop. No, 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 He's no, not hop. no, don't hassle the hop. It's the um, <laughs> the guy who plays the voice. Yeah, yeah, Michael. Who's the guy? The guy? The, the guy who is the same guy from technology Magnum, Magnum PI. Yeah, he He's, doesn't have a face, so technology could redo him. Yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah. all right. So this is great. I, I really cool. like I really like this. And then here's your alternate. I had an alternate. We did a little alternate just because we don't know what each other's picking, and this is a bit of more of a constrained category. Right. Um, so we picked a third just in case. My third was a little bit safe. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, it's Discovery G4, the Challenge Edition. It's yeah. proven itself. Sure. It, it's done more than I would do with it. How about that? By the so, way, it works. did we say, all right, let's, let's just talk about prices for one second. We, did we say that the motorcycle was 14000 we did say 14,000, but we did not say right. that the Volvo 35,250. 35, yeah, that's a so, lot of money. A lot of money. I mean, it's, but well, uh, a lot of money for a, you. A lot of capability. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of capability. That's all you ask. <laughs> a lot of capability. A lot of this, capability. Okay, so the G4 Challenge Edition. I actually edition. felt like this was a little overpriced, but we were in constrained by price. Well, it's 21.5, it 21 and it, uh, yeah, lowish it's, miles, only 40,000 know. miles, though. So, you know, it's been. This is like something that somebody would win in a sweepstakes in 2004. So what, like, I, was, you, what I was thinking about this one though is, I, I grew up on the beaches of Long Island, yeah. and this is actually good for that, whereas the Volvo, as you point out, not really good in cold yeah. and warm weather, but it's got the sand rails on the side of it. Like, you know, you could, you could go to a beach on it, just as it is. Yeah. Hang yeah, out there a usable for a few days. I mean, the Volvo is cool and all, but like, yeah. really, you know. Yeah, and I, I can go get coffee this, this. Yeah. Rob, this is the last generation that had Solid axles, right? In, in Land Rover? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, yeah. like, Stadium we, we, seating. Yeah, I love that. Yes. We don't really sort of do discoveries. Like, because for me, like, the shape never attracted me. Like, I never got excited about the way they just look. I mean, capable cars and all. And then, especially sort of the evolution of them became like, I mean, something very yeah. different, disappointing yeah, like, yeah. in my mind. Yeah. Right? So, like, I yeah, went yeah. all the way back to Gen 1 and, like, nah, not mine. So, discos yeah. just never did it for me. It was actually it. almost my first car. Oh, yeah? I had oh. made a deal at uh, Land Rover, um, Land Rover Amityville. Yeah. Nice. A manual, and it was like 14 grand, and I was a young kid, and I did a deal, and uh, they approved it, and I gave them a deposit, and then I went back to go pick it up, and they said, oh, sorry, I sold it to someone else, gave us more money. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's, not right. that's, that's not right. That's not right. That's right. friggin' Land Rover of Amityville for you. Yeah, yeah. Land Rover of Amityville. I don't know if they're even around anymore. Yeah, not with that sort of behavior. I that's an not. Amityville horror story. Yeah. Right down the street from the house. Yeah, actually. I, 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 I solid. Think. It's yeah. like the... Yeah, it's, it's, got, it's got live axle, so it's still, it was the trucky. Wow. It was the last proper truck. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the well, first, the first of, ones were proper yeah. four-wheel drive machines, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Sort of pro tip, or, or one of the things we do, sometimes when clients want defenders to have, have rear disc brakes, or they have rear drums, but they want discs, it's like actually one of these axles we put on from a, from a disco. Uh, yeah. Sort of, they already come, it's like a lot easier, it like comes with the whole gear, all the setup, so yeah. you don't have to sort of fiddle with all the drums and swapping and stuff like that. That's smart. And they're not as strong as the Defenders, but you know, unless you're really, right. really just sort of beating it up, it's good. Cool. Yeah. cool. Well, good pick, sir. I thought they were weirdly sensible. They were weirdly, yeah. for you, they were, well, of course I there's a I, motorcycle so, instead of a truck. So, so yeah, I think my I think my picks are actually an homage to you because I went uncomfortable. Cool. Oh, it's a family oh. affair. <laughs> a family well, affair. okay, so uh, guest's choice, number two. Um, let's see what Rob picked. Oh, oh. Oh, I get it. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Uh, safe choice, right? Safe, safe choice. choice. 
in looks, a couple looks of ways. Looks pedestrian until However, you read. Yeah. yeah. Right, so, so tell me about this thing. I mean, it's, it's sort of in spirit of the one we have here, sort of like a fairly stock exterior, just a good functional car, like taking it like a little bit further ahead, but not like tricking out too much. Yeah. Is it the most sort of inspiring build of the century? No. Right? So this is a 97, 1997 uh, Defender 90 uh, with an LS3 where the Rover V8 used to be. Now you're talking Zach's language. That's yeah. Zach talk. Basically anything with an LS in it. And, and I gotta say, this is also kind of a testament to how popular uh, this whole overlanding concept has become because I remember we were looking for Defenders forever since we started the club. Like it was always kind of on our mind, but we were always, we are a little resistant. We, what Mike was really vying for, honestly, was one of these two-door Range Rovers. We did. Not too we late. Have, we have taste. I know, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get one of those too, but we finally bit the bullet and got our own Defender last year. But I remember early days looking for these things and they were like 30, 35 grand. And then I find, I actually found a truck is the same color with the LS3 in it on Craigslist, probably like six or eight years ago for about 35 grand. And it was, Right, it was someone's homebrewed Frankenstein project and it was rough and ready and around the edges, but mechanically it was all there. Now, you know, it's all become very chic and it's ninety thousand dollars for, for a nicely built wait truck. Wait a minute, so know. that's the thing. This is yeah. ninety grand. It's -E but it's or yeah. <laughs> Whoa, nice. Um, this is ninety grand, but it's also one of the lowest mileage like uh, Defender nineties of that era that I've seen. It's only eighty thousand miles. Usually they're like, you know, 200, 100, 200, and they still hold their value. So an 80,000 mile Defender 90, that's been kind of worked over and it's got a lot of, um, it's got, you know, your ARB air lockers, you got your Fox shocks, you got your RTE springs. Um, and uh, I think there's a worn winch perhaps on there. I'm, I'm not certain, but, uh, or super winch, excuse me. Um, very <laughs> nice, nice very smooth. Very nice piece and of it seemed like guys Corvette had, motor. <laughs> yeah, but they, they did really? like more than just sort of the gear. It seems like, and that's what like got me right that they actually did a proper restoration. It looks like they galvanized the chassis. They actually went through the proper sort of steps, right? Yeah. yeah and and that's like I mean why it also has a price that it has, right? Yeah. In the, yeah. You know, in a build at the end of the day, you still need quality. Like you can drop a big engine into whatever. Yeah. But it's still you gotta yeah. have like some. Yeah. Yeah, granted, solar, gra right? granted, my thirty-five thousand dollars Craigslist one is probably not galvanized chassis. I'm pretty. <laughs> it was in Massachusetts. I'm pretty sure it was rusted to bits. And as soon as you get on that motor, you'd rip, rip the chassis. I just apart. think it but, looks really cool. I mean, it's yeah. so with, funny with to open, open that hood yeah. and but, see those those but, head covers. Yeah. yeah, but also also worth noting. Other than that, it looks basically stock, like yes. a little yeah. bit lifted. But it's, he hasn't gone total total uh, retro retro so, mod. We, we yeah. Yeah. Right? Okay. Good choice. Good choice. I know, right? All right, so it. here's your second choice uh, that I popped in here. So this is a standard, but very good condition, uh, 84 Land Cruiser FJ60. I know, like, some will say, oh, man, that's so boring. What is up with that, right? That's cool. I love them. I just love the shape, and actually, I had one before, yeah. well, the Range Rover now. And I just love how they're sort of put together, designed, and they're sort of robust. Yeah. This one looked really clean. Couple of, of sort of tweaks to it. I would have done things a little different, like you know, the interior and sort of done just a couple of tweaks Let's like see. we normally do. Um, oh, so it's a yeah. standard. It, it's like the, the stock girl. interior. I'm a sucker for a hula girl on the dash. Oh, of course, yeah, you, go. you gotta have a hula, hula girl dash. Um, so uh, also under 100,000 miles, 97, kind of knocking on the door. But like, it's still how many? Of these, do you see that are under 100,000 miles? Mine has 350 or 400. Yeah, exactly, yeah, right. right. I, I don't know if this is where <laughs> this vehicle is from, but it's in a really dry, arid place in California. Oh, that's key. Yeah. So it's, it's like it's, those things rust like it's. I mean, that know, is. Yeah. That's, 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 that's pretty the arid there. Well, we can see where what where it was. Let's see. It is. Assuming, right? Assuming that's Moore where Park, it is. California. So it's, it's yeah, it's uh, in the valley, I guess, right? So that's deserty. So. That's where uh, they shoot all the porn, isn't it? <laughs> near, near enough, right? So uh, 37.5 for this. Um, these that obviously right. are going for uh, a lot more money than they used to. Uh, and it's always the good ones that are bouncing from the 10 to 20,000 into the 30 to 40. And um, this but is one of the good ones. Classics. If these you look at this, classics, right? yeah. this is yeah. one of those that like, pick them up now because in, in a couple of years, five years, whatever it is, right? They will totally. be the new FJ40 sort of craze, right? Yeah, right. And, sure. and and the thing is, while in FJ60 
world, this is a lot of money. Right. If the car is, if the truck's clean, it doesn't have rust, the frame is good, like it's well worth the money because if you buy a rusty one and try to fix it, you'll oh, spend yeah. more than that yeah. to get it there. Yeah. No, no That's problem. That's true. It's the, the equivalent in the real estate market of location, 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 right? Yeah. It's, it's condition, condition, condition. Did I just make up a thing to say to people? Yeah, it's been said once. All right, there you I, go. sorry. <laughs> I never what did you do there? Matthew, doesn't it look like a? It looks like a big Volkswagen estate. I, I, oh I, yeah, yeah, yeah. A Volvo estate. A Volvo estate. It, it does. Yeah. Same, yeah. Similar. Kind of, same kind yeah, of line. You can't talk bad about the language. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so let's get. Okay. So that's number two. And here's your alternate. Although you gave me two. Um, uh, I'm gonna go with. Well, let me see. Cause hey, we got to do both. I'll yeah. do it quick. All right, we'll do it quick. Like the so you got an '89 Rover '90. Right. So that. I mean, it's just a pretty truck. Yeah. This one is clean, it's good. I mean, I, you know, back to basics. You know, sometimes that's just good. Just get out there, drive it, and you know, don't mm -hmm. mess around with stuff too much. Yeah, and it's got the old, the old engine, right? The two, the two, 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 uh, two point five liter TDI. Yeah. So I mean, the, the it's, diesel. Two hundred TDI is not as reliable as it's a three hundred or two point five, but it, it's still a solid truck. Ooh, nice interior. It's very nice. Wow. It's sort of clean. It's like nothing, no frills, but that's also like. Yeah. That's part of the overlanding experience. Enjoy the outside. Don't don't focus too much on the truck because yeah. then you're missing. I don't think, I don't yeah. think that they right. should have anything extra on them. They should be it, they should be super simple. Ah, I love it. Yeah. 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 But but simple like depends on yeah. the simple. Purpose. That's important. Tasteful. Right? Tasteful. Tasteful. If you are out there and you're doing it correctly, the less there is, the less there is to maintain. There's less to break. Less to haul over a hill and things like that. Just That's true. Simplicity and minimalism is good. Twenty-seven. With a touch. Twenty-seven. Yeah, respect five. the heritage, oh, right? Sure. 27.5, which is less than like a regular Defender 90 uh, of 10 years later. Um, I mean, that's a good deal. It's a good deal. Good As deal. someone who buys these a lot, and this is a right-hand drive, do you find that the right-hand drive like uh, affects the price? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I a mean, ton? What, what is the percentage of a right-hand drive? Is it 20%? Is um, oh, right off the top. I mean, for us, it's almost like binary. Wow. Is it left hand or is it right hand? No, I just want left hand. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, I mean, there are very few people stateside that want a right hand. Like, if they do, it's like for a very quirky reason and they think it's super cool, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Super fun. But also, you don't have, you have easy passes now. So, <laughs> most of the true. problem is taken care of, right? right? You can just go through toll. And you're not going to overtake anything on the country road with that. So, it's no, like, forget right? it, right? Yeah, you're fine. You're stinking your lean. I love this flat green, too. It's, yeah. It's great. All right, number, your second alternative, or, I mean, your, your second alternate is oh, oh my. I mean, you cannot talk about overlanders. We have to go off the reservation a little bit, but that's what overlanding is, right? Driving off the road, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. These Safari Porsches, right? I mean, they're, this is not sort of a real true one, so this is, you know, so inspired. This is, it's not a, a, a Lee Keen one, but it is, uh, it looks like it's, it's got a snorkel. It's more, of, yeah, it's very rally and not yeah. so much like the modern, yeah. um, uh, the lifted. Cool. Yeah. yeah. What am I saying? It's hard. It's not, it's it's more of a rally car and not so much a safari car. Which I guess uh, it's a semantic argument. Yeah. But the safari car is sort of like the um, that the Africa safari rally. Yeah. Right. And this is like a regular rally. True. Um, and but still, it's really nice. They did a nice job, and it's got that it's got the roof uh, exhaust in case you do any fording. Um, it's cool. Nice. Now this is where he broke the rules, though, because I, I, I actually came across this in my picks, but it's still this, up. This only got listed. Still uh, up the the spirit of a GS, you know. This Ooh, is this yeah. ends. Okay, so you can't hold all right. me down with rules. Yeah, ends so, in six days. It went, ends it in six went days. Up like still a chance to bid. Wow. I know. It's I'm twenty-five thousand as of right now, but it's going to go for more. Are you logged on right now? Uh. I am. <laughs> oh, God, God, God. <laughs> the, the last time that happened, I ended up with a Jaguar, <laughs> which which I still love. But anyway, okay, great pick, Rob. Um, uh, it's it's Zacky time. All right, all right. So actually, you're so, you start up here. You have a prologue, though. Let's yeah. go through the prologue. Right. So so I grew up, uh, you know, in Maine. My dad had. Not this. He had a he had a '53 CJ3B. This is the closest thing I could find. Uh, so it's a 1954 Willys M38A1 Jeep, which I think is some kind of military spec. The CJ3B um, was that was one that the that the post office used. Oh, maybe I, I don't know. No, yeah. but you're right. I think I think <laughs> you're right. The the this is the military spec, and then the CJ is the, um, the yeah. My dad had this thing, unbeknownst to my mom. He went out and bought it. 
And then uh, being my dad, you know, a Highlander. He turned from, it into a Corvette. No, Hi, Hi, no, <laughs> no. So my dad was the, the Connecticut Highlander that moved to Maine to be the water and, and, and you know, loved the water, but never quite get it right. Like he sunk our Chris Craft. Oh. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and, and yeah, then yeah. ironically, he bought, he bought this Jeep and had a bucket of uh, bottom paint around and there was some rust. He's like, oh, I'm just going to sand this rust off. And he painted it with that red, you know, lead paint that you use on the bottom oh. of the boat. Oh, whole paint. Yeah. Wow. Great. But anyways, you know, he preserved it. He was just a preservative he was putting on yeah. until he could make it proper. But, I, you know, we had this thing around, like, kind of, he never really had time for it. He's a busy guy. We had a restaurant and stuff. And, uh, but we'd still go out and kind of tinker around with it, get the thing to fire up and drive it. It was super reliable. I learned to drive stick shift on it. Wow. We'd drive it out in the pipeline and it was, it was epic. So definitely have something for old Jeeps. Um, if you click on the next one. Okay. So this is a, uh, oh. a 74 CJ5. <clears throat> so if I was to go there now, I'd probably actually buy something like this. And then when I was in Colorado and like, you know, hiking up, backcountry snowboarding and stuff, we would get passed by guys in Jeeps like this. It's the right, most yeah. simple thing. You, yeah. You'd have the other guys with like, I guess at the time it was a, maybe an FJ62, they put a Corvette motor in, they're like, you know, up there, spinning their tires, making lots of noise, oh, trying to get up this rock. And you'd see this guy with like four dudes in a Jeep just kind of like rolling by in low gear, nice, nice and smooth with his yeah. tires soft, just like, it's the right way, short wheelbase, big fat tires, lower the pressures, and just crawl over anything. In um, my town that I grew up in, every CJ5, of which there were many, we were a bit more beachy. Every single stick shift was a beer tap. Oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what those make me think of. Right. Round headlights, yeah. beer tap shifters. There was that one guy that would drill it out for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, and we, they would always wrap the bumpers, the fenders in rope. Right. Yeah. You, well, the Oak Beach Inn, <laughs> you go to the Oak Beach Inn and then you get a, uh, a Long Island iced tea, which was invented there. Yeah. And then you get a Jeep with a uh, tap and as then, a gear shift. And then that's, crash it on the highway. That's your Long yeah, Island right life. Right out of there. Yeah, so my for, Long Island life. For me, this is, uh, for my, and I'm going to change this up. This is going to be one of my proper picks now. This is an alternate oh. before telling story. Okay, this, I like this. this. You're in. So it ticks all the boxes of my personal overlanding desires. You know, I could go make it on any trail I want, but I could also kind of rock up to the beach and it's this cool, fun, stylish thing, you know? And, um, and is this that is the, the original motor? What's yeah, that motor Yeah, th this is a oh, yeah. The 304. V, the, yeah, the 304 uh, V8. Yeah, the AMC motor. Yeah. $8,000, not very much money. I know, look at that. Fair. It's, uh, you know, I'm, it's I'm, surprising I'm, that, I mean, they're popular, of course, but yeah. like, I feel like there should be like a second sort of wave where these totally. come back and sort of totally. become yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, more prominent. Yeah, Once I think, people I think, like, I think like the, they've been over defended. Yeah, go I think maybe because they made the CJ5 for so long. Yeah, like even early ones like this, they don't really people don't view it as a classic. It's still just that truck some dude. But had people in high who school. had them as kids are our yeah. age now, so yeah, that's so what I, makes things that classic. Yeah, I mean, and it becomes nostalgic for your youth. I can't think of a more better way to spend eight grand. I, I this, think that this know. is a really important way to do off-road too, is that everybody always, as you said, goes for like these big, heavy, powerful things. Yeah. Light, light, you just kind of skip over the over the surface. Yeah. Do it either like that or do the Volvo with six wheels. Like, right, but, right. But that'll get through anything. Yeah, so so that's kind of, for me, that's that's the origins of it. So around that same era, we can go to my next, my next right. one. Your my next. Uh, one of my older brothers <laughs> yeah. had a Suzuki Samurai. Yep. Uh, wow. Yeah, you know, plastic body panels. He actually had the soft top version. This is like the hard this top. This is cool. I like that one. Uh, my, one of my older brothers had it. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. And um, yeah, he he was uh, he was in the Navy at the time. But when he was off, he'd come come home, and we would go rock around this thing again. I was like, I have much older siblings, so he's like 12 or 13 years older than me, and my other closest brother is 10 years older. So they would go out, occasionally they'd bring me and then like drop me off and you know, I'd have to like, be like, oh, we're going too deep here, you gotta walk back home. So like, go back home and then like six hours later, you know, sunset. They came back no, they're, the no, they're out in the dark. <laughs> they're out in the dark, they flag someone down and the tow truck is going to pull them out because they'd like, right. they would just trash this thing. Like, yeah. this, but they're really the, capable, right? Oh, I mean, they yeah. sort of look like, you know, so, well, small trucks, but like, that yeah, catches. I mean, they thing. bite, right? So every year I go to Costa Rica, and the town that I go to is like, you got to drive off road for two hours to get there. I have to cross two rivers, and you never know what conditions those are yeah. in. And there's all manner of things to rent, and I always get 
a, a Jimmy or a yeah. Samurai. Well, Matt Farrow Light went to yep. Farrow went to uh, Panama. Doesn't win any beauty yeah. you know, yeah. contests, but you know. So yeah. I kind of love them though. Yeah. They're, like the proportion of wheel size to cab size. Yeah. is off, which yeah. is great. Yeah. You know? well, and, and it, looks, it looks like a live toy. Yeah, and this one, you know, I mean, those are, I think, just a little bit larger than the stock tires. This makes it look like kind of maybe it's got some purposeful intentions, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I love these things. Also, I think if you're trying to get over stuff, having a small, light truck with a plastic body is probably the way, yeah, way to do right. it. Yeah, that's right. You know, what, as soon as you add all the extra mass, it's more stuff you get to haul around. So I like those cool. whitish seats. Very, yeah. very, very fetching. Yeah. Well, Farrow went to Panama, and he actually did an episode where um, one of, uh, he found this guy with the samurai, and the thing is ridiculously capable on, like, some of the worst kind of very, very rainy, very yeah. muddy trails yeah. and stuff. Uh, torquey little motor. Yeah. Very good, very good, Zach. Yeah. So good that, picks. Th those good are picks. my picks. I got a couple alternates, and uh, one overlaps with uh, with Rob here. I think. Oh, yeah. which one? Let's see. Is it? No, no. Uh, they kind of. Oh, yeah, so, you got it. So, so again, like I was sitting, that started out. Wait, by the way, sorry, we forgot. How much is the? Oh, the Samurai, Samurai was eight thousand to eighty-two fifty. So more so. than the Jeep. I mean, yeah. Yeah, anyways, I got two fun trucks for eight grand. I might yeah. buy both. Yeah. One's gonna break at some point, right? Um, so, so yeah, where we started, I was asking Rob, like, what, what is overlanding, you know? Because for me, it's, I guess it is any way you're going to get overland. And a, you know, this is an 83 911 SC Safari, so really similar to what Rob picked, but this is one that did sell in the last three months. It's interesting. 60 this one, grand, by the way. Yeah, big, pretty big money. It looks like a pretty nice build. It's funny, this one they lifted it and did the Safari suspension, Not but didn't really put knobby tires on it. wheels on it. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it's sort of halfway there, but, yeah. Yeah, that's you know. kind of weird. Maybe that's just so you could drive it on the road. Yeah, like but it's got a skid plate, it. you know. I mean, it's, I mean, it's maybe not done. Maybe you want to finish the Safari build. I mean, it's yeah. got, look at those, it's got the it's got it, Yeah, it's got the longer travel suspension from Elephant Racing, but I, I don't know. It, they they, they kind of went halfway way? there. Oh, yeah, I didn't check. What's the suspension? Is it from... Yeah, I think Elephant is selling all these yeah, things that are putting the Keen. Co so it's sort of like a Keen build. Yeah. Um, but again, yeah, let's get over Overland a different way. I would love to be hiking up those trails in backcountry Colorado and see one of these things trying to get by me. Yeah. It'd be incredible, yeah, you know? Totally. Um, so, all right. yeah, one alternate pick, I get one more. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do get one. Because uh, I can't, I can't, I can't, so I can't. You doubled the amount of cars. I don't know. Like, um, yeah, sorry, sorry, it's sorry. Done five. Well, hey, I, 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 like, like I said, I kind of was regretting this. I'm like, oh, man, how are we going to pick one. fun trucks? But I found so many Listen, fun trucks. Listen, you know I've been on these for a long time. Ah, there right. right. Yeah. So this is an 89 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Wait a minute. But with an L3 motor in it. Right, and it's it's $79,000. Yeah, that's thousand dollars and it's not is it a um what, uh, what's that company that does uh um it's uh wagoneer um that, that does like the the oh, down in texas or yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's so uh, uh not wagonlander i don't Tell know us. we forget we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah we'll we'll you'll find it yeah, but yeah. um they do the like the icon edition they do the icon stuff, stuff. Yeah, yeah they do the real like it's like restoration plus whatever you yeah. want to call it i mean Someone, money, I guess what money was no object here yeah. you know this uh and i just think you know I can't help myself if something has an LS motor in it. I, I mean, it. these were always really like stylish and and you know the luxury car for the late '80s. The other Range Rover. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. the, the country house car. I know I what you mean. I know what you mean. But you know what well, I mean? Um, these these are cool trucks. And these are kind of like, kind of like yeah, Rob's yeah. Defender. It's got the LS Drop motor. The kids off to private it's school lifted a little, but otherwise interior exterior People totally stock. This is newer than I thought, right? Like this is this, this is an '89, so it's uh, getting to the end of. You know when they started making them? Because I thought they were they actually older. They started in '63, and then they ended in I want to say '90. Three? One or ninety-two. A long run. Yeah. It's cool. It's the early ones had like I think cooler interiors. Like you start getting They're into the late eighties, it's become like well, plasticky. Became, right, and right, 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 right. You lose it, but I mean, they, they tried to get. It, they tried to because it's an old platform that they had. They were making money on, and they didn't have to do too much to it. Oh, so the they just added the some. Worst. Yeah, yeah. steering is like yeah. right out of that. Bed. Yeah, there you go. See, yeah. I've kind of got some nostalgia for that now though, because like, like I grew up in. I love the smell of know, leather in the morning. Suburbans that had the same interior, you know. Yeah. But, the the velour seats yeah. and everything's plastic. It, that kind of brings everything's back memories. square. It's all yeah. square. Yeah, that was our era. Yeah, square era. Yeah. So so yeah. Square. Again, well done, so, sorry, sorry to overload it on but the nice. overlanding edition. Yeah, solid but choice. Uh, there's nice. just too many choices. Seventy nine thousand. It's fine. It's fine. Right. Okay, ready? 
All right. So what did, did they All make right, a Land Now edition? No, but uh, they did make <laughs> they did make the La Forza. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. I couldn't believe I found yeah. this on 1980 here. La Forza. So this is a basically a Ferrari SUV, right? Yes, pretty much. <laughs> Absolutely not. So so the great. Right, <laughs> right. Let me just explain. If you guys, yeah. if you guys are not La Forza aficionados, this is a design by none other than uh, Tom Charta who did things you like, like the, oh, I don't know, the Pantera, um, the uh, Fiat 124 Spider when he was with uh, uh, Pini Farina. Yeah, yeah. He did, uh, uh, he did like the Ferrari, uh, one of the Californias. He, I mean, like a real designer, right? However. I, I love mm -hmm. it. Something happened. However, along Wild the way. Wild night. Right. <laughs> so. Um, it's like a. It looks like a golf. Yeah, like a stretched golf. It's a stretch. Stretch. <laughs> exactly. That might be his next one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to, my crystal ball says you might have a golf. The story behind this was a company, they took the, um, do you remember the Fiat uh, Iveco truck chassis? No. no. You did, right, the, the picture is there. Um, they Send took, it to me. They took, I mean, they, they took a, a pretty um, reliable four-wheel drive body-on-frame chassis. Okay. And they put this Tom Charter designed um, body box. on it, box on it. I mean, at the time, this was a pretty high, uh, high concept for an uh, SUV. I love it. Yeah. Um, uh, so then, I think it's weird how the front wheel doesn't fit in the wheel well. No, it like, doesn't really fit. See what I mean? Like it. it go back to. Well, that that's one. what happens when you take a body from one no, car and stick another car. Look, right, fit and finish. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the gap there, and then yeah, it's almost the fit and finish was great. So here's the thing. <laughs> but it's cool. So oh, yeah. yeah. they brought it to to America. They put in a uh, DOT, a DOT approved motor, which was Ford 5.0. Oh, uh, wow! So there's Foxy. so you got your sort of burbly Ford late yeah. late 80s Ford 5.0 in it. Okay. Um, and it's got this sort of a Veco truck chassis, and you've got uh, an interior that. Well, let's put it this way: this one isn't great because it's just really crapped up. Wait, wait, look at the front. Look at the look at the seats. The seats are a little crapped up, but you know I will say though they look oh, yeah. damn it comfortable. Was, it was fine yeah. Italian leather when it was it new. It was this used, to, but look you could tell the Ford pedals. Yeah. Um, it used to be a fine Italian vehicle. Because um, they did the walnut. That was right. what made it into the wood. Exactly, wood. but the walnut yeah. is all warped. It makes it all kind of look like a yeah. Pantera GTS inside. Right. Like or the, a, the kind of pleated seats and the walnut. Look at how plush the, right. the glove box Or a Di Tommaso Longchamp or a yeah. uh, uh, Quattroporte, Maserati Quattroporte. Yeah. Like a, a so really far, you're well, winning. Well, and, and you're winning so far. You haven't like even got to the price. price. They practically gave it away. The price, check this out. I think, okay. Twenty-six fifty, two thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. I got away with a, a, a an icon of design, yeah. designed who, who, one of the by one of the most famous, uh, storied designers in the automobile. Yeah, it's not that great, but it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> no, who, 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 whoever bought this and bring a trailer, get in the comments and tell us how much you just won life by yeah, buying a well five-liter Italian I, SUV for less than three grand. The, the paint's a bit tatty. Paint <laughs> needs a paint job. Like like the photos. But you're gonna use overland good in it. This is uh, it's like overlanding. It looks, no, but like the it's hero patina. shots look great, and then you see the hood, and it looks no, like no, it it's has in skin trouble. cancer. It's in trouble. The problem is it's it's patina. You have yeah. to get that clear coat off. Yeah. Get just scrape it up, and then put another ten coats of clear coat on top. That's what you do. I Saint love it. Gobain. I like it. Uh, good choice. Head, what other pieces of garbage did you buy? Okay, this is this is the best of, of the pieces of garbage that I bought. Second oh, is. God, we're into it. The Volkswagen Iltis. Oh, yeah. wow. Do you know the story of the Volkswagen Iltis? By the way, um, is this it? is the Canadian version, uh, <laughs> licensed and built by Bombardier yeah. for the Canadian Army, I guess. So when I said Volkswagen, I thought you were going to, I was going to predict though. that you'd have one of those Golfs <laughs> that was jacked up. You know, what, what is it, the, the Rally? Uh, yes, no. right, well, yeah, the Rally Golf, right? With the, with right, the yeah. old, but the one we didn't get, the Synchro Golf. Yeah. Yeah. Which that would have been an excellent choice, I by wish the way. And I'm sure one. they've had some on a bring a trailer. But okay, so this tell me about this. So this is like a VW thing with off road suspension? Not even close because okay. this. That may, floats, doesn't it? It, it may, <laughs> but it, while it wears the Volkswagen badge, it's actually an Audi. And do you know what wow. drivetrain this thing uh, introduced to the world? Quattro. Quattro. This is the first vehicle with Quattro. So if you're an Audi fan, you have to be into the Volkswagen Opus. The other thing is, it can uh, 
not float? I don't know. No, I don't know what else. It can go anywhere. It's I very light. I feel like light. I've seen them floating. Yeah. It's, um, it's Does it have a hull on the bottom? It looks like it, it looks should like have a hull. It does like it, it looks should. like it should have a hull. Well, that's that's called uh, approach angle, right? Or yeah. departure angle, whatever. Right. You so you don't have any. It's Check for propellers. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You have a propeller in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Put a propeller. But look at that interior. You know that's that old Volkswagen Audi interior. It like, looks look like it's, it wheel. looks like it's center drive. I know it's not. But it, it, it's yeah, the a little trickery. The steering wheel you have to kind of. It looks like you're. Maybe it is. You're a bit sachet. Or does it slide uh, across? Is that a slider? Kind of looks like it. It does, but I don't think that yeah, it would be possible. Um, yeah, you got this uh, little 1.7 liter inline four. And by the way, can I tell you another thing about the Volkswagen Altus? It won Dakar. Oh, a modified version wow. won the Dakar Rally in 1980. Wow. So it was a very, wow. very important vehicle. Um, is that a? That looks like a different steering wheel they put on, but I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know the deal with this one, but I know it's Canadian. You've been had. Um, and I know that uh, it is an, an unsung hero Weird, of yeah. Audi fans everywhere. Did you cool. got the mic again? It's cool. It. Yeah. Oh, it comes with, it comes with it comes binoculars. With binoculars, they call nice. them. Yes. You can see very far away with this thing. Anyway, I, and oh, then, yes, oh, the, oh, even better, this is the, it's it's the Farrah Fawcett Farrah, picture. Yeah. Which, just a little inspiration to get you over the land that you're driving. Yeah, like that's, that. that's pretty great. Yeah, if you can if you can make it out of this gulch you just buried your truck in, right. your thoughts it's gonna be waiting for you. Yeah, I, I actually Imagine drove backpack. I drove one of these uh, in Canada uh, on an Audi launch once. Oh, wow. and they're great. They're, they're really great. They can was, go anywhere. There was a shotgun involved. No, I think no, it was no, a handbrake. that was a handbrake, not a shotgun. Oh. oh. Uh, it goes 160 so, uh, how kilometers much, how, per hour. How much did this sell for? How much did it Ten sell grand. for? 10 grand. Wow. So amazing. a nice fair round yeah. number. I'm at between, I'm not even at 13 grand. So I Mike bought cars. a motorcycle and you got an two. Italian exotic SUV. I bought a great motorcycle that would go anywhere and he bought some funky shit that's yeah. never going to leave his garage. It may or may not float. Actually, the aristocrats. I didn't buy anything. I just, <laughs> I just played a game. <laughs> you did fine. All right, yep. here's my al alternate. Oh, this looks unimog. It's like, it's like oh, a, a guess. Oh, good one, good yeah. one, Michael. So yep, uh, there is, it's an old uh, 862 Unimog, which has enough space to actually build an overlanding. Uh, it does. You know, RV types of experience. But, um, you <laughs> know, cool, it's small inline six stroker. Um, I don't know what any of this means. Like, I don't know how to shift it because it's all in German. I know what Getriebe means. It's a gearbox. Like uh, I just like how they say exit on highways. Oh, every every exit on the uh, like everyone I get a little chuckle. Ass fart. Yes, <laughs> everyone. I'm a I'll grown spot. man, but I just like yeah. I just. <laughs> You're a grown man. <laughs> yeah, mind of a child. With the mind of a child. Anyway, okay. those are my three. And uh, you guys I, actually. I, oh, you have a no. That is your. No, that was it. I was just really happy. And by how the way, this one, one. This one cost ten. This was ten. Eighty nine hundred. Oh, eighty nine hundred So I'm under. I'm a little bit over eight, uh, 20 grand, and I have three vehicles. I'll tell yeah. you what, great job, everybody. Good yeah, job, everyone. Yeah. Normally, um, I think you guys pick terrible. No. I know, normally. But these are good. These are all really good. Uh, but anyway, I needed a pornographer's overlander, and that's what I got. His picks are very interesting. This is the guy who actually builds these things. His Ours are like, this is so cool. But right. his are like, well, this one has the right engine, and it's yeah. been galvanized. Right. See? Exactly. We, brought yeah. some, we brought some pro in here today. We brought a pro. That's Provide um, some adult supervision, you know? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. heavily needed. Um, yeah, Rob, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having um, me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we're really, I'm going to, I want to go and check out this uh, this uh, classic Range Rover you got here. It's we go really drive it? cool. Um, I do want to drive it at some point. And you're, where are you? You're in, you're in Connecticut? Yeah, so we have a shop club? up in, uh, well, no, yeah, I'm here. Well, we are at the He's car here. Club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, where, yeah, where are you? Are you coming to us from my <laughs> satellite from uh, here? Feed, yeah, no. So we have a shop in Europe. Uh, and we have a shop in Connecticut, and these ones we got up in uh, Bridgeport, so okay. Bridgeport, right outside cool. of Bridgeport. And actually, that one ran a week ago. No, it doesn't run because okay. yeah. they actually decided to take the engine out and do some work. So you'll have to come up and right. check it we'll out. Check it out. Um, anyway, Zach Mosley, Michael Pritchinello, um, Rob Madera from uh, Legacy Overland, and I'm Mike Spinelli from The Drive. And thanks for watching After Drive, and we'll see you on another After Drive from this place. Classic Car Club Manhattan. Or, or somewhere else. Or somewhere else. See you guys later. next time.